So yesterday afternoon, I was at the laundromat in Moorabbin doing some washing, and I meet this woman there. She's probably, you know, mid-40s, reasonably good stock. I mean, she wasn't an unattractive woman. She starts a conversation with me, asking me what book I'm reading, and she had some old books out, out in the store shed or something that she actually offered me. They were just all fiction. I didn't really want any. I took one just to be, just to be courteous. But uh, anyway, once she gets over that initial hurdle of just social anxiety, she just blossoms out and starts talking about herself. Just, just all about her own life and about her past relationships and her family and you know her spiritual cult that she's in where she goes into a state of zen and communicates spiritually with her other fucking charlatans and friends and uh what the reason i'm telling you this is because she said she has two daughters right one's 13 and one's 17. now the 17 year old daughter seems normal other than the fact she smokes chuff so that's probably probably going to be a gateway into speed and ice and she's going to have major issues because i've seen what happens like people start smoking chuff when they're young it sends them in the direction of other drugs. Call me cynical, but that's probably what's going to happen. But anyway, that's not what I'm concerned about. It's the 13-year-old daughter, right? She goes, oh, my 13-year-old daughter, she has an anxiety disorder. And she goes to a special school for other kids with personality disorders. And maybe it runs in the family, the woman says, because I have depression. And I'm taking my medicine too. But my meditation with my friends and going into Zen... On the, in the spiritual realm, that helps with my depression. And I'm sitting here listening to this woman, I can't even get a word in at this stage. She's just on and on and on about herself. And the more I look at her, the more I realize, not only is she struggling to make eye contact with me at all, but her eyes look like they're painted on. There's no life, there's no soul coming through her eyes. I can't read her. She's just this, you look into her eyes and there's just this vague, superficial nothingness, a glassy-eyed nothingness. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. Because the amount of girls I've met over the past couple of years who are on fucking drugs is insane. On prescription drugs. And they are so cooked, man. So fucking cooked. You know, like, I, I dated a girl last year. She was only 19. And her mother was a pharmacist, so she had no chance. She'd been taking hardcore ADD pills since she was about 12 or 13. Uh, different types to try to find the right one for her, as they say. And uh, she ended up taking Conchetta, double dosing it. It's methylphenidate with a long ester attached, which slows the rate of release of the drug into your bloodstream. I know how fucking hardcore this shit was because I tried some. I took some to see what it would do to me. I took one pill, one pill. And that day I didn't eat a fucking thing. I didn't sleep till about 4 a.m. the next morning. And all I thought about all day was sex. Just from one of those pills that that young girl had been taking since she was fucking 12 or 13. You know? And she was double dosing the shit. She would have short-term memory issues. She wouldn't remember what she did two minutes ago, ever. But she was such a beautiful girl, but so cooked on this shit. It's such a shame, man. You know, I see this other girl uh, who uh, is, you know, mid-30s, and she takes a combination of, uh, of drugs. Zoloft, antidepressants. But if she takes the Zoloft on its own, it cooks her. So she also takes anti-epilepsy drugs that the pharmacist also prescribed her, even though she doesn't have fucking epilepsy. But the epilepsy drugs balance out the Zoloft experience, apparently, you know? And, for, it's just, and did, speaking to this woman in the, in the laundromat was sort of a catalyst which created a realization in my mind that so many white women in this country, young white women, middle-aged white women, white women of all ages, but particular, particularly the young ones, they're so fucking naive and they're all on drugs. They're all fucking cooked. It's so rare to meet a woman who isn't cooked on fucking gear. It's speed, man. It's pharmaceutical grade speed that they give to these to these girls. Now, I know that not all the boys in lads might, you know, they might not agree with me when I say that the majority of personality disorders are all fucking bullshit. You know, because there might be a few people in this group now who think they have a personality disorder because some fucking poser in a white coat, some quote-unquote registered practitioner told you you have a problem with your personality. But um, think about this. One Greek word for witchcraft is pharmakia, a specific practice of witchcraft, namely potion brewing. It's called pharmakia in Greek. Okay, so just imagine in your minds the image of, a, of an old witch, a rotten old crooked-nosed witch, 
uh, leaning over her cauldron, brewing up a fucking magic potion. Okay, that might just seem like, so, you know, a fantastic European folklore, but it's based on something real, man, like all European folklore. It's based on drug making, and it used to be something that you would burn at the fucking stake for. The drugs, the potions brewed up by the witches, would change the way your body would work, make you easier, easier for, for evil to inhabit your mind and your body, you know, easier to control. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that all drugs are bullshit. I mean, I might be dead if it wasn't fancy biotics. I've had deep tissue infections, which my body probably wouldn't have been able to kill on its own. But I think, you know, for thousands of years in Europe, uh, infections, especially deep tissue infections from cuts and stuff, would have been a big killer of strong men. So, you know, there is a place for some degree of pharmaceuticals, but certainly not happy pills, yeah? Fucking drugs that just keep serotonin in your, in your brain for an unnatural amount of time to the extent where you can't even produce serotonin without these drugs anymore. But think about this too. We have a government funded commission or organization in Australia called, called Beyond Blue, right? Now I remember uh, years ago when I used to work in the city, when I was like 21, 22, 23, big banners produced by this, this uh, taxpayer funded Beyond Blue mental health uh, organization banners hanging from the ceiling of Southern Cross Station in Melbourne in every public toilet at eye level in front of the urinals telling you you're probably depressed saying oh depression doesn't care if you're the strong one it can still get you call this number feeling tired call this number and I'm thinking why the fuck would, would a government want to convince the citizenry that they're depressed it's disguised as this humanitarian effort to raise awareness you know much fucking evil is done in the name of humanism and raising awareness. But then I, you know, I realized, I did some digging and I realized, well, it didn't take me long to realize that it's illegal to advertise prescription drugs in Australia to the public. It's not in most states in America. In, it's, in America, in most states, you can still advertise antidepressants on TV to the public, but you can't do that here in Australia. It's illegal. So what do they do instead? Government is linked up with Big Pharma and they're advertising uh, the symptoms with a number to call which just leads to you taking the drugs anyway huh? fucking bullshit man and these mental health diagnoses they're fucking tailored to the human ego what do I mean? think about it you go in to see a doctor you don't fucking exercise you've got no concept of your national history or your racial lineage you've got no fucking culture that you feel like you belong to you're told you're a bad person just for being fucking white and then you're responsible for all your fucking atrocities and evil and anything bad that ever happened in history. And so you're just feeling like shit, you're looking like shit. You go to the doctor, right? First thing the doctor tells you is, uh, you know, uh, that you, uh, you have a special disorder, a chemical misfire in your brain, an imbalance, uh, a disorder. It's a special thing, right? That's number one. Every fucking person thinks they're special. That's one of the first fucking aspects of the human ego. Everyone thinks they're fucking pretty good and pretty special. Pretty pretty unique in some way. You think you're different. And so you end up sitting there thinking, this is the answer. Oh my God. And the doctor says, yo, you poor thing. You've lived with this special brain disorder your whole life. If only you came to see me sooner to get your special brand of personal drugs with your fucking name on the bottle. And, you know, people, they end up sitting there thinking, this is it. I always knew I was different, and this is the answer. Thank you, doctor. And then the second aspect of the human ego, fucking laziness. Okay? It's tailored to your self-centered belief in your own fucking special importance and your fucking laziness. Just take a pill instead of dealing with your problems, getting stronger and fucking overcoming. Just take a fucking pill. Take your happy pills, citizen. It fucking does my head in, man. And the main reason it does my head in is because I've met quite a lot of beautiful girls that I can't fucking... I can't be with because they're so cooked on prescription medication. So fucking cooked. And they're all so convinced that they have a special disorder so they must take these drugs that are frying their brains. And it just... It just devastates me because it's predominantly white women that it's happening to. It's fucking white girls, man. It's almost like it's fucking aimed at them. Yeah, but, but anyway, that's my uh, that's my thoughts on 
on personality disorders.